Why is it that these shots from Transformers 3 feel gross and unnecessary, while this scene from Cool Hand Luke is a fantastic piece of visual storytelling? The key to figuring this out is asking yourself, who is this for? In a literal, practical way, who is seeing this? This is the first time I ever looked at a girl's ass on screen and said, damn, this movie's gonna be shit because. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. No one is on the stairs with Rosie Huntington Whiteley. It's just her. Her boyfriend is in the scene, but he's in bed asleep. What you're seeing is not for anyone in the movie. The only people seeing it exist outside of the story, outside the movie. It's Michael Bay's salacious gaze and you and me and the audience, whoever's watching. There is no functional reason for the camera to be here other than to get the teenage boys watching in theaters all riled up. Conversely, director Stuart Rosenberg is utilizing one of the fundamental techniques in film, the point of view shot. Acclaimed director Brian De Palma explains this extremely well. Which is, you know, the idea of somebody walking or looking and then you showing what they see and you and the audience member identifies with the character and what they are seeing and this is how we experience life through points of view shots unlike any other art form is that y you can show the audience and your character the same piece of information they see what the character is saying so you digest that point of view it's 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 unique to cinema over and over in this scene from Cool Hand Luke, we are shown the men of the chain gang, then the woman. We see through their eyes. Hey Lord, whatever I've done, don't strike me blind for another couple of minutes. My Lucille. They are physically exhausted from working all day. They've been baking in the sun. As prisoners, they're cut off from society and any contact with the opposite sex. They're thirsty in multiple ways. As far as the woman goes, we get clued in that she's watching them as much as they're watching her. Luke is the smartest of the prisoners, and that's why he's the only one to realize that. God, she doesn't know what she's doing. Oh boy, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's driving us crazy and loving every minute of it. Shut your mouth about my Lucille. So there's a motivation built into the story for the scene to be filmed the way it is. We're being shown the men's perspective, we're learning about them, we're learning about Paul Newman's character, Luke, and we're learning about the woman. She not only knows that they're watching, but she's enjoying torturing them with the display she's putting on. She has agency and is relishing that fact, while the prisoners, being prisoners, have none, and they can only watch from a distance and admire. Come on, safety pin. Pop. Come on, baby, pop. With Transformers, it's a dead end trying to think of how it ties into anything related to story or characters, and that's why it feels the way it does. You guys on set watching Michael Bay behind the camera when he's filming those shots and he's yeah. just stroking that tripod. I know, I know. It is so fucking gratuitous, <laughs> you know, man. Yeah. I'm like, hey man, you see, just he does that every time. <laughs> Michael Bay, don't just don't look. Are you out of your corn-fed mind? Can a similar scene feel gratuitous, even if there is a built-in reason for the camera to be there? Yes. This is Star Trek 2. Alice Eve's character is a weapon specialist and daughter to a big shot in Starfleet. But the only thing people remember about her character from this movie is this scene where she takes off her clothes. Why does this exist? Well, I guess you could say that we learn that Admiral Kirk, her boss, is a creep. But really, he looks so that the camera gets to look, so that the shot gets put in the trailer, and those same teenage boys get riled up again. It's a throwaway scene or shot that the director, J.J. Abrams, has since apologized for. It's Kirk, who was always a sort of womanizing character. Yeah. So the idea was, have a beat like that in the midst of all this action and adventure. He takes ha a quick peek. Have a beat yeah. where he looks and doesn't look away. I don't think I, I quite ended the scene in the right way, but... So why is it that the opening to Lost in Translation doesn't feel the same as either the scene in Transformers or the scene in Star Trek? After all, it's Scarlett Johansson's posterior and she's just laying there wearing pink panties. Well, the lack of camera movement plays a big role in why it doesn't feel the same way. As many have pointed out, this is a reference to painter John Kassir, who produced dozens of paintings centered on a woman's midsection with varying undergarments. 
There's something objective about what is being presented. Johansson's character, Charlotte, is just there. Her body is there. It's a statement of fact. The camera doesn't track it. We don't see a zoom on anything. And there's no man in the scene to look her up and down. The camera never mimics that motion either. It's not a point of view shot. We get the opening title and it's over. It's a striking image and provocative in the same way Kassir's paintings are. But nothing about the image encourages you to gawk at her form. The form is there and that's it. But even if you are a woman and you're directing this artful work and referencing the work of an artist you admire or enjoy, who presents women's bodies as they are in a given scene, you cannot control the reaction that people have to the art. And that's why if you Google this scene, the comments are mainly, oh wow, awesome crack, love the ass, friggin' sweet backside. Like the subtext of Ridley Scott's 1991 film, Thelma and Louise, the only way to escape the gaze of men is to well, 